is a good band, not just because it's a uh, comfort band from the side of Aura Fire, but the way that Araki Hoshi likes to play around the map. They like to group up as five, and going against someone like the Kadita might be a little too Same difficult for them bands. to maneuver around. But to now live. we can see that Araki Hoshi have once again opted for that Faramis ban, and Beatrix wow. is going to be the first pick once again for Aura Fire. This is the exact same thing that happened in game number one. Perhaps this time around, though, Araki Hoshi know better than to choose what they did before. Maybe they have different priorities on the board. Masha Valentina might be a better option here, or Paquito Valentina. Switch it up. Don't give the Paquito over to Fluffy. We know what he was able to do on that Paquito. Pick it up for ourselves. Banana, he is a very good Paquito player. In the MDL, we've seen many, many times on that Paquito, he's made the plays happen. They can switch it up and instead go for their own backline dive heroes. But they went wow. for the exact same thing. This is Deja Vu in game number two. For Aura though, will oh they go for the same thing? Because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, Valentina. Yep. Paquito next. Is it gonna be Paquito next? There's no reason for Aura to feel pressured in this situation. RRQ are the ones who need to be considering this. Oh, wow. Man. And again, Eterna, uh, Arashi. This is something we saw from RRQ in the Grand Finals against RG Philippines at MSC 2022. All four games, they went for the exact same bands and the exact same picks. I wonder if they're thinking that, no, it wasn't the draft, it was just the execution, which makes sense, right? You can say, you can make an argument that there are moments where RRQ had success, but overall, why make it difficult on yourself? You can you can remember how difficult it was for them. Maybe they want to go for Masha and Yif, and then for the Roamer, they'll go for someone with a bit more crowd control, a bit more security and save, the same way Eterna was talking about. There is a possibility that they want to secure a gold laner this time around. Perhaps the Claude. I think it would have worked better than the Irithel, being able to go in without any hindrance. But no, it's going to be the Cho pick for the side of Araki Hoshi. So now Aura Fire once again, have the option to start limiting that gold lane if they want to. Now, I do think it actually is slightly better than game number one's draft, right? Because with the Cho, you pick up a Masha, you pick up a Cho. Now, both of these heroes will be able to be flexed, right? Masha, XP, Roam. And for the Cho, XP, Jungle, Roam, three lanes as well. They picked up the Esmeralda last game, and I called it. We have never seen Albert on the Esmeralda. It's probably going to go to the XP lane, and Masha's probably going to go to the Roam. Now, it makes it a little bit more unpredictable for Aura Fire. But they might just, well, they will go for the same exact bands, I believe. They went for Klon and Popo in game one. Go for it again. I mean, the gold laner still is very, very vulnerable to those bands. I don't think Aura needs to change anything here in terms of the bands. They want to go full dive. The pod is so perfect. Ban it out, ban it out. That's the only option they oh, have. But Italia. now Aura Fire, they're actually going to shake things up with an Italia being banned away. So Interesting. they don't think that... Masha is going into that roam position once again, perhaps. We saw a bit of a fun, well, a bit of a fun fact, but the highest win rate on the beaches is still on Skylar, but he's not getting the hero at all. Looking at the, you know, the head-to-head the -head almost between Facehugger and uh, Clay here, it does seem like they're both high ground heroes, but you can see that Aura right now is a lot more flexible. They can put Facehugger in several different heroes, and Clay, we just haven't seen the same kind of. I don't know, flexibility, the same kind of adaptability. So maybe there's something that they're trying to go, uh, they're trying to abuse. But it seems like Aura, they're expecting RRQ to go full dive and make sure that that Beatrix is a non factor. So they ban out the Natalia and RRQ, they're going for the same exact bands. You're right. Same, same. five, all same. five, <laughs> same bands. But Aura, they leave the Popo and the Claude open for Irithel. RRQ to take. Huh? They ban out the Irithel, which they were able to take down in game number one. So maybe now they just want to. You know, go, try, play your signature heroes, Skylar. That's a little feisty. <laughs> it, it's getting personal here. It's a taunt from, our, uh, from Aura, just saying, you know, we can take your best shot. Doesn't matter. So, now for RRQ, the first pick here, is it going to be the gold lane, or are they going to try and hide it and do something your unexpected? The, the Brody that we talked about in the previous game, it is going to be here right now. It has a lot more self-peel, more utility, and it, they can secure a lot of the heroes escaping, right? Which is how Aura likes to play. They go in, they get pickoffs, they dash out. Now, the Torn Apart memory will be there to try and deter them from doing that. It's very, very... Ooh. But there's a lot of... Single target damage here, actually, for RRQ. 
But again, we'll see. For Aura, they can just go for the same picks again. Uh, nothing stopping them from doing that. The Amon and the Ruby was the pick they went for in the last on their last pick. So now Aura have the chance to go for the same exact draft. They might change up a bit. Maybe giving the jungle, changing the jungler. Looking pretty all right, you know. The Amon in that game didn't really have as much pressure. Oh, I had a feeling, Mirko. Is this? Oh. Esme? I had a feeling. It's Esme jungle. jungle. I had a feeling. Esme jungle. It's I had Esme a feeling. Jungle. Oh, bro. While you were talking, I was like, this is gonna be insane if Aura Fire picks up this Esmeralda in that jungle position, and oh my god, they really do it, and they top it off with the Ruby for Godiva to add them a little bit more CC, and now this is. A heavy front line from Aura Fire. Our Kyoshi, <laughs> how are they gonna seal this off? Where is the Cho gonna go? Aura has a lot of dive as well, and it's still a good mix of magical and physical. That is something that Aura abuse a lot of times. We have a comment here for anti mage though. Lemon is very good with momentum heroes and Clay with damage heroes. Huh? That you know seems to be the case. Now the final bronze. pick for our Q though. It's gonna Ooh. it's gonna be Ling. Oh. The Ling pick for Albert again. He's trying to get his first win on the Ling in Season 10. Ladies and gentlemen, right here, the drafts have been completed. The Cho will go to the Rome, I believe. But here we go. Talent game duration prediction by Axe. 18 minutes, 19 minutes, and 18 minutes. In game number one, they went to 22 minutes. So I got the most accurate time. Take that, Eterna, Arashi, <laughs> the double A's. Ouch. We need Ouch. to actually predict like longer games, man, because the games have been so, so close and back and forth. We're not seeing the same kind of one-sided domination because teams are getting better at recovery when they lose momentum and when they lose control. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Both of the drafts set. It's Albert on the link. It's Cho as a roam and Banana on that. Masha here with the changes that RRQ and Aura have made. Who will take game number two? Is it going to be a sweep or is it going to be an equalizer? Back at it again, ladies and gentlemen, into the land of dawn. Aura versus RRQ. What I find difficult for this particular game between Aura as well as RQ is the fact that the Ling was chosen in that last pick. And I do believe that Ling is going to be able to free move high mobility with no one from the side of Aura Fire to particularly stop him. I guess they do have the Ruby, but it's not as reliable, let's say, as if Aura Fire picks up someone like the Cho. So it's going to be very difficult, in my opinion, for Aura Fire to contest these neutral objectives on the board. And look at Hai already trying to abuse the fact that he's on a fighter here. He can bully Albert in the early game, especially because the mid game, the mid lane for Aura Fire is also winning very consistently. Uh, Vin and Clay try to deter them, and Fluff, uh, Banana comes in to try and act as a threat as well. So Archie Hoshi, they will be able to get the orange buff for Albert so far. This is going to be tough though. Again, you can already see that they're putting a whole lot of emphasis this time around into that gold lane. It's going to be very, very tough for Skylar. He opted for the Killing Spree Emblem too on the Brody, so not with the weapon mastery, won't have that much damage in the late game. He's trying to gamble on that early to mid game. Well, he kind of has to, right? Later on, the Beatrix will be so much more effective, more range, more uh, options they can do. Uh, I think the, a big factor here is the fact that they're relying on... I guess the plan is for them to m ensure that Kabuki will be destroyed in the late game because they have assassins, they have utility lockdown and all that. But honestly, we've seen that Kabuki, he doesn't struggle against assassins on the beat picks, partially because of how Ooh. OP the Wesker is. Albert gets taken very low, he gets bullied out of the jungle of Aura Fire. Man, a lot of them have been forced to recall already. Aura Fire being as aggressive as they can be or even... Trying to look for compensation from the aggression given to them by R. Hiroshi, but now two minutes in, we can already see that the turtle has already spawned in the land of dawn, and Kai seems to be the first one to get there. Kai on Demon Slayer, on the Esmeralda. He's gonna be able to take this for free. Ling doesn't have the purple buff. They're not even gonna try to contest, and Hai saves his retribution for his own purple buff. Already an objective take here, but in the bottom side, Vin is trying to dish out the damage on towards Kabuki. Doesn't have to wait the dragon, but the dive comes in here. Real world relation popped in as well. Kabuki still has the damage onto Albert. Might be able to outplay here, but he's still oh! gonna be able to do it. It's gonna be Albert taken down. Go Diva with the save, taking first blood. Presented to you by the Samsung Galaxy oh, Nyan, series. Nyan. still is able to find it to connect on the Skyler, what is the real world manipulation or a fire? Oh my goodness gracious! How did they do that? That was Aura Fire outclassing our Archie Hoshi mechanically, and we don't 
see that often. I mean, our Yoji. Albert on this link, he's mechanically gifted on the link. And he was able to get outplayed, that was insane. He is able to get that gold buff away from high though. So a little trade, perhaps a little fire already starting to heat up in his emotions as we can take a look at the emblems now three minutes in. Well, from almost the Demon Slayer seems to be what heroes are uh, prioritizing right now, especially in the jungle. The weapon mastery for Kabuki ensures that in the late game, he will be one of the main damage dealers. As oh. in contrast... Oh, oh my whoa. goodness! The reaction time by Facehugger, able to dodge away from the way the dragon, and now Vin, you're caught. Godiva jumping in all the way, high with the falling star moon, catching clay. But Godiva needs to be back, he needs to back off here, too aggressive. He goes into the recalls, just taunting Albert in his own jungle. This, this is getting personal, man! Albert's the level below. Two high levels right now. below. Two now. It might be three if High gets a purple bomb, and yeah, with the dragon there. Taking Albert out. Oh my god, Facehugger might be able to take him down. Still has a finch poise, but Aura completely dominating our RQ in the fourth minute of the game. Wow, it's just so difficult. They, they tried so hard to make that play in the bottom side work out, but nothing was set up for it. Even the mid lane wasn't really pushed out. They make a play for Godiva right now, and they will be able to secure that. But again, it's just a kill. Huh? We've talked about kills against objectives, and even then, Godiva was able to buy so much more time. <laughs> what is going on now? Aura Fire with the lead that they already have built on 2000 in economy. They are going to start this next turtle, but Vin already opening up the map, looking for a play perhaps onto high. Ah, uh, Albert jumping in with the retribution, doesn't get it. High, two levels ahead, that's what that gets you, and High doesn't want to stop there. With the falling star when he jumps onto Albert, stealing away the creeps in his jungle, RRQ. This is a weird spot to be in for Albert. Two levels below of the enemy jungler as a Ling against a Beatrix Arashi. I've, I've told you so many times how um, you know, annoying it is to go up against a Beatrix on the Ling. And now we're seeing it. Godiva trying to go for the I'm Offended. Connecting and bringing it back all the way for Kabuki to take that kill. Skylar taken down. Instantly bursted down by the Terminator Kabuki. That's just crazy. And now RRQ, they're in damage control, and there's not much they can do. Albert is trying his best to scrunch up some kind of resource from his jungle, but again, Godiva just comes in solo against three people. He doesn't even care. Fluffy is doing the exact same thing. So both sides of the jungle aren't, aren't safe for RRQ Hoshi to play around in. It's crazy oh how Facehugger's been playing as well. The real world manipulation is being open here, though, Mirko. Yeah, uh, it's just a take. It's a purple buff take. They're just denying Albert. Every farm, every buff, Albert does no damage and they take a turret in the bottom side, punishing RQ's movement towards that top side, even in that XP lane. Fluffy's able to win one level lead. High now with Falling Star Moon jumping in. I'm offended connecting onto Clay. No follow up as of yet. Kabuki though is looking for it. Vin jumps in with the Jikunda, unable to find him with the Dragon onto High, but now Face Hooker as well. This is out the same. You want to kick my friends? I'll kick you too. Aura. Outclassing RRQ! Oh no, Albert, please tell me you get this. Okay, he gets it. He gets out. But man, if, if Fluffy was able to take that, I would be tilted. A small win, I guess, for RRQ Hoshi, but Godiva here goes in for this conceal play. Wow. They don't right. let him play at all right now. Banana tries his best, but he's against three people. That's not a wise move, my friend. He's gonna get jumped on. I don't know about this. Okay, how? Ooh. That was a sprint. That was a running Masha. And you, okay, he just, he's, he's really good, man. He's really good at the game. <laughs> I guess. I mean, now he's going on this next objective. He's stealing all the turrets away from the side of RRQ Ocean. This is something that we mentioned before as well. Kabuki doesn't just deal the damage, but he's also really good at the siege and taking those infrastructures away from the enemy. And now you can see Aura Fire already grouping Whoa. up as, oh my god, look at this. Yeah, Clay forced to flicker out. Godiva going for the dive. And Facehugger with the weight of the dragon. Who's the toe? It's Facehugger. Albert now, he's trying to go for the steal, he's gonna get terrified, that's another turtle take, Albert caught, will be taken down, oh, he's still able to dash away from the fight, but Face Tiger does not want to give him any space, this is a 0-2-0 Albert on a Ling, two levels below of high. That is just painful man. RRQ, they're making plays, they're trying to get the pickoffs, get the highlight plays they always usually get in the games. But Aura Fire, they're fighting fire with fire, man. Where have the dragons completely countered? Dives, they die, you know, when they get dived on by RRQ, they dive back. So, Aura Fire, they're just completely beating RRQ down and they don't really have an option. Even if they take this to the late game, 
for the most part, Aura Fire has more solid lead game heroes too. Aura are making it look easy. Not as easy as how you guys can go for grab food though, because one tap with a discount code right there, grb.co slash MPL, scan in the barcode, the QR code will work too. You guys can get that very good discount. Look at the food on the left. I want that. Oh, I want that. And it seems like Aura Fire wants something different though. They are going to be sieging into that top side. But we'll see what happens as Vin doesn't seem to be able to get an end gauge as well. Albert might be in trouble though. Forced to use that Tempest of Blades. Mirko oh my Kabuki. It's, oh. it's, it's, get, it's getting really illegal now. It's, no. it's not even surprising anymore. Every single time you land a shot, we all know you're going to land that shot. It's more surprising for Kabuki to miss a shot now as Godiva is going to be able to zone out the members from RRQ away from that tier 2. But this is insane! Aura Fire! They're so disciplined in the way they play the game and RRQ are actually the ones who are being caught banana! What? He, he's all the way in the back! He's going to get caught here! He was waiting for something but he's waiting for Kabuki to melt him down right now. Banana's going to be caught and I'm offended. Now taken down Finn as well! All the collapse coming in. Clay will be forced to flicker out. They jump in once again, and the damage by Fluffy will be able to take him down. Skyler taken really low. Fluffy diving into the base. It is a complete shutout. Aura fire. 10 to 2. I guess R. Kyoshi, they're looking for some compensation on board in that top side, but they gotta be careful. Our fire, they might be able to get more in that inhibitor turret. Now, they are leading with 9,000 gold, a man advantage. They might be just going straight for this next board. Yeah, a full setup right here. I don't know what RQ can do. They can risk going for the Lord, but they're just going to get wrecked in the fights anyways. They're trying to go for some split push maneuvers right here, trying to abuse the mobility that Albert has, but honestly, it's just not enough. Our fire has the control right now to force Arkyoshi to fight them by pressuring the base, pressuring for the end. Looking now at the items right here, for Kabuki, oh. he even has the win of nature to ensure that there will be no issues at all for him to deal with the dive from the side of Arkyoshi. There's just not enough. It's such a sad link. Look at this. Windtalker and Berserker's Fury in the 10th minute of the game. You're, you're not going to be able to deal that damage. And if you jump on Beatrix, you can guarantee I can guarantee you that the Beatrix will one-shot him. Echo proud yep, Hunter Strike. Loud. BOD, that's all you need. And he's, oh, he's, he's higher level than Albert. When we saw the composition coming in from Arkyoshi, I was doubting the CC from Aura Fire, but I was overlooking the fact that Facehugger is on this Valentina. And we gotta say, Facehugger has been an immaculate Valentina as well. Being able to deal and take the best ultimates in this particular station. And oh, here we go. Oh, Vin with, with Dragon bringing high back all the way there. The Beard Faction is still there. Facehugger is gonna be able to kite away really well. Ooh. Albert jumps in, picking up a kill for the hands of Skylar as they go towards the Lord. Now, Albert still trying to buy time, but he's gonna get taken down by Fluffy, punched in out of existence. Two for one, or a fire looking for the siege here on the bottom side. They're looking for the base turret. And man, it's 11 minutes. I forgot how fast this game really is. Clay with the real world relation, able to zone out Kabuki. Throwing up our memory, not able to pick off anybody. And Aura with the first Lord, incredible value as they have been able to take down that base turret. But RRQ, they're still persistent. They're still staying in this game. Wow, man. I mean, later on, if they really, really catch up, there's a chance they can just guarantee that Kabuki gets taken out. But then what? Facehugger still does a lot of damage, fluffy and high. The way they itemize, they never go for full tag build, so they will do an insane amount of damage. And Albert, as well as Skylar, won't be doing enough to melt through them. This is a replay by the Central Galaxy AC on that fight there. And with the tower protections in place for the side of Araki Hoshi, they're still able to defend here by sacrificing Albert to buy a bit more time. Overall though, Aura still has the control. They are still in the same spot. It's rinse and repeat. RRQ, they like playing for traps, they like having death wishes in the jungle, but they don't have any control at all, and Aura make their play again. Oh my god, Albert was forced to use the red tree to take that orange buff away. Aura not giving the space. Okay, I thought Kabuki was going to hit Clay there. <laughs> I was just waiting for it. Uh, but yeah, he's just, he's just aiming down. He's aiming down sight. He does not want RRQ to leave the base. Conceal play. Oh no, Vin. They spotted Vin. Oh. Kabuki going for the chase. Fluffy has the knockout strike. Conceal again by Vin. He's running away. Fluffy caught him with the knockout strike now. Able to dish out some damage. And Aura, oh my god, they're just going for it. They don't <laughs> stop. But okay, finally they stop. They know that the Lord is coming up. But whoa, whoa, whoa. Banana. Banana again. He's jumping in. Trying to save Vin there. We'll be able to this time around. 
Oh, I don't know. I, I really don't know what RQ should do at this point. I mean, it seems like they're going to start trying to split push. It feels like RQ Hoshi were able to distract or fire a little bit there in that bottom side, buy Albert a little bit more time to push that wave in that top side. But I'm not sure how far this can go as now Aura already grouping around this Lord. And they're resetting it because they need to get pressure up top first. They're clearing it first. They do not want to rush anything. Again, with an 8,000 gold leader, Rashi, they're not in the position to actually force things. It's RRQ who needs to force things, and Aura are just baiting them out of base. Aura is just trying to make sure that they overextend, and Banana he was pushing, but now he's rotating, coming in. But for the most part, Aura just seems to be going for it. Oh, and there you go. Vin's gonna get taken down. Albert jumping in onto Godiva. Torn apart memory, tickling Godiva there. Only taking out away like a bar of HP. Aura Fire find a pick. They do not want to look for the Lord. They want to look for the kills. Oh, oh, Albert? Oh no, he's gonna get spotted. He's still able to get out, but it's... I think it it's might be a free lord now for Aura Fire. Goliva going for the I'm Offended again, just buying some time. Kabuki, Banana. oh, this is it, this is it. Banana can't actually go for that. Kabuki's taken very, very low, but Banana will be chunked as well. Will be jumping in. Does Kabuki have Haas Claws? Is he able to sustain back up? No, he doesn't. He doesn't have Haas Claws, but he will be able to get back up by taking that purple buff. Albert, a miracle play is what they need to look for. This. We've seen it before, but I don't think we'll see oh. it here. Hi, and Aura set up. Beautiful. Zoning Albert away. Another Lord take. No objectives, neutral objectives for RRQ at all in game number two. I honestly thought that if RRQ Hoshi committed to that, they might have been able to get something out of it. Did you see? RRQ Hoshi had all their ultimates up, except for that real-world manipulation, but I'm sure it would have been up rather mm -hmm. fast. And from the side of Aura Fire, they wasted all their resources already, but they didn't commit onto it. Oh, I don't think this is a good push. It's only one way pushing in. Bottom side and top side isolated here. Backside though, Vin. Jumping with the way the dragon bring Kabuki out of range so that RRQ can have more time to defend. Now Kabuki with the render shot. He oh. finds Clay and he's able to buy some time for the team to go onto the top side turret. Albert with a fish boy jumping in with the Temple of Blades as well. Real world completion popped in, but Godiva. Clay is there. Godiva's just waiting for it. I'm offended. Picks up and look at the backside. Actually, Banana going on to Kabuki's 1 HP with a nature. Oh my god, he's still able to get the kill. He's looking for more right now. It's a once for one. Buffy taken down for Albert. Torn apart memory popped in. Blade armor bought by Banana as he goes in on the face circle, but still not able to find the kill. Kabuki just goes crazy. Falling Simon locking him in place for Kabuki to dish out the damage once again. Finding a double kill as in the back side. That's gonna be Godiva jumping in to secure the kill. Clay oh! taken down by Kabuki. You cannot stop the dragons. Aura Fire! Dominant display! Burning the Kings down! Burning the Kings!